in true healing and reconciliation to the victims of Kukraon. Over to you, say, may continue where we left. Uh, Brighton, I'm not sure whether you were talking. I just could see your lips moving, but I didn't hear a thing of what you were saying. Um, can you please confirm that you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you, say. We may continue where we left. Uh, maybe for those who are on Zoom, can you just send me a message and uh, confirm if you can hear me? I am really not sure uh, what is happening because uh, the connection is that we just lost connection and we are back now, but I'm not sure whether people can hear me. Yes, we can hear you, say, go ahead. Okay, uh, someone says they can hear me. Okay, uh, I'll continue. Sorry about that. For some reason, we lost our internet connection in the office. Uh, one of the best uh, internet connections uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. So I'm not sure what happened. But anyway, we'll start. Uh, we, are, we are used to starting, like, just like we always get plaques destroyed and uh, starting again. So I, I, I'll try and summarize what I'd say, then um, move on. So I, I started by uh, reading part of a letter, which I said was on the 26th of January, 1990, 1997, on the World Peace Day. Um, the Pope, uh, Pope John Paul II, wrote a letter to the world. And that letter is in the second page of Breaking the Silence. And the Pope says, where lies and falsehoods are sown, suspicion and division flourish. And he goes on to say political or ideological manipulation are essentially contrary to the truth. They attack the very foundation of social harmony and undermine the possibility of peaceful social relationships. And it is my belief and it is my argument that the problem why we have not solved the issue of Gugura only 39 years after the Gugura only genocide is mainly because what the Pope talked about, falsehoods and lies, which have created suspicion and division amongst the communities, political manipulation, the unwillingness by the politicians to uh, let people tell the truth, and also the issue of justice versus peace, forgiveness versus justice. I always hear the one side of the story where people say, no, just forgive and move on. But you cannot forgive someone who has not asked for forgiveness. And for someone to ask for forgiveness, they need to say A, B, C, D happened. I also say that um, we need to acknowledge that um, Joshua Nkomo signed the unit accord in pursuit of peace at the expense of the Gugura only victims. But he, it was at that particular time, it was noble. That was the only thing that he could do to save the people of Matebele land from dying. The people were dying and he had to make sure that he actually saves them from what was going on. So it, it is quite critical. It is quite important that we understand the context at which Kukura Wundi happened and the context, is which, uh, the context in which uh, the unit accord was signed. I don't think he had any choice. I don't think he, he could have done anything better than he did, but he had to sign the unit accord. And in signing the unit accord, he signed a document which said nothing about the victim, but protected the perpetrator from being persecuted by having, you know, the amnesty uh, clemency number one of 1988, I think, which actually you know, pardon the, all those who were involved in human rights abuses in Matebele, be it the members of the 5th Brigade, the police, the army, the politicians and everyone, including the dissidents. 
And you then realize that from the onset, the issue of political manipulation was always there. So when you hear today people say, you know, Gukuraundu was solved in 1987, you ask yourself, which part of Gukuraundu was solved in 1987? Because Gukuraundu is not anywhere near the document of the unit accord. You will never find anything that talks about the unit accord, Gugra Wundi in the unit accord. So in 1987, peace comes at the expense of justice. And years later, 39 years later, the victims of Gugra Wundi are still talking about justice. They still want justice. They are calling for justice. And you know, if you if you look at um, you know, you, 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 if you, Mahmoud Mamdan in his book Survivors and uh, uh, yeah, Survivors and Survivors, he talks about uh, the, the need to distinguish between uh, victor's justice and the victim's justice or the survivor's justice. So the victor has his own way of justice. And the survivor have their own form of justice. And these two forms of justice are not the same. And they don't call for the same things. And if you look at what is happening now in Zimbabwe and what was always happening in Zimbabwe when it comes to the issue of Kukura Wundi, it has always been the victor's justice. It is the perpetrator who is telling us what kind of justice we should have. It is the perpetrator who is leading the process of reconciliation. It is the perpetrator who wants to lead the process of forgiving and solving the issue. And they want to, you to hurry, please hurry up and forgive us. You know, there are better things to do. So why don't we just get over this issue of Gugura Wundi? And you ask yourself, is it in the interest of the victim or it is in their own interest? You know, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa, you know, gave us a very important lesson. And one thing that they did, they said, we will forgive you as long as you come out in the open and tell us what happened. Where there is full disclosure, you're not going to go to jail. But where you tell us half truth, then we're going to take you to jail. But we, 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 we didn't see that. We didn't see any truth uh, uh, telling when it comes to Bukura Wundi. We were not given an option to ask what happened. The victim was never given a time to talk about what happened. But every day the victim is reminded that he should move on. We have better things to do. We need to build a, a better Zimbabwe. So just get on with it and uh, consider Kukura Wundi that. You know, politicized justice is not durable. So we cannot have justice that is sloganeered. We cannot have justice that comes through a political party. And we cannot have justice that comes through the perpetrator. The perpetrator will never deliver justice. That is the justice to the victim. Because the victim wants the perpetrator to account. But the perpetrator is the one who's coming up with the template on how this justice should take place. So we should also not forget that nothing much has changed in terms of those who are in power. So Zimbabwe is quite a unique uh, uh, city in, in, in a unique situation because those who were involved in Bukura Wundi are still in power. They occupy very important offices. So they have the influence. And the victim is still a victim, marginalized, isolated, shouted at, dismissed, not taken serious, and accused of being tribalists. So when you raise the issue of Bukura Wunda, ah, no, 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 you now want to, to disturb the peace and tranquility. You are a, 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 a Bukura Wundist, or you, you are a tribalist. You know, you are being, you, 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 are, you are used by the imperialists. You are an agent of the West. 
But I'm the victim here. And the perpetrator now tells me how I should mourn, how I should behave, how I should forgive, how I should... I mean, where has that ever happened? But this is the situation that we find it. So when it comes to, to Gukuraundi, you know, those, a lot of people choose amnesia over the truth. They choose to forget. They choose to pretend like they don't know what happened. So we have these processes that keep on coming, you know, go to the chiefs and the chiefs are going to, you know, then you're going to tell your chiefs what happened. You're then going to look at your case and we're going to solve you. Now we are going to bring the National Peace and Reconciliation Commission and these guys are going to go out in the communities, listen to you, and then they're going to come up with a document and then we are going to see after that document what happens. So people pretend like they don't know what happened. People want to forget. They behave like we don't know that they were getting daily reports on how many were killed and where. And in some instances, they were actually saying, we want more bodies. You can't tell us that these are the only people that you have killed. They want us to, to, to believe that they had no control of what was happening. They had no oversight. They were in the dark. They want us to believe that they honestly and genuinely want the victim to talk. And they're going to give this victim a platform. So people decide to forget when it comes to the issue of Gugurahund. And this is why you see that processes, you know, start and from nowhere, then they begin again. Let's not forget that at the height of Gugurahund, besides the intelligence was reporting every day what was going on. The diplomatic community was reporting every day what was going on. Zapu was reporting every day what was going on. The press, ZANU itself knew what was going on. But we had the Jambagwe Commission, whose report we know was never published. And one will ask, but wh why was the report published if uh, 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 people really were interested in knowing what was uh, uh, going on? But we know the, the, the whole idea was just to make sure that we, we forget. So we start the process again. So, you know, there is this, this talk about, uh, you know, we, we need to move on with the future. We need to agree that the past is past. Let's forge ahead. Let's start a new beginning. It was then. Don't worry about it. It was then. Let bargains be bygones because we, we, we are starting afresh. You know, we, we, we don't want to, to go back to the, the painful history. So let's move on. No, don't worry about the future. Be optimistic about Vision 2030. But what guarantee do I have that 2025 will not bring 1983 if we don't talk about it? What guarantee do I have that 2035 will not be 1983 if there are mechanisms, there are no mechanisms that are put in place to make sure that what happened never happens again. And the young people who are 35 and below, even some 40 below, and the older people who are in other parts of the country, when you say, you know what happened, and then say, exactly what happened. Because there are still people today who don't know or who pretend not to know what Kukuraundi was all about, what happened. And when you tell them this happened, you say, no, 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 not in Zimbabwe. That's not true. You are trying to rewrite history. You are lying. So if we don't have an agreement, if we don't have a similar understanding of what happened, and someone says, let's move on, how do we make sure that what happened does not happen again? Because when I then say, but this is Gukurahund. Someone has no idea what I'm talking about. But you can see Kukura only manifesting itself in different forms, in different political <coughs> parties, in different organizations. Because we never sat down and said, this is what happened and it was bad. 
So I find it interesting, actually, that uh, uh, in 2000, I think it was around April 2000, the Parliament of Zimbabwe, you know, the prevention punishment times of genocide according to the 1948 statutes. The Parliament of Zimbabwe signed that. We are part of that. But what is it that, they, that we don't want to talk about? What is it that we signed to when our brain is the party? Elephant boy, the side. The victim is big. And from 1987, uh, the 90s, the government was very fast. You start in the 90s to get organizations, uh, uh, the Catholic Commission, uh, but you cannot forget about Book Round. This happened. They are largely ignored. Yeah. And they can afford to, to ignore a, a lot. Uganda, but Fucking Africans. Fucking you. Fuck you. That's interesting for me because uh, those are the, it's just like reminds me forever. challenges that we face uh, in covering the issues of Kukura uh, Wundi. Uh, you, you always have something Uganda. interesting. Uganda, man. Uganda. Uh, you Uganda. always have something interesting happening. So uh, it's, uh, for your life, we have the real life. On a, life, on a social a media life. platform. Uh, and I know it's because uh, we some people shared the link. So once yes. you share the link, yes. uh, um, it gets um, to um, everywhere um, and you, you have those issues. So um, anyway, we, we, we will continue. Definitely, we're going to continue and we're going to have a discussion. 
So the unit accord is is, is signed and uh, there is nothing much that happens. And if you look at the 90s, besides Zapu, besides a few guys in the civil society, largely there is nothing that happens. And it is mainly because the guys who were uh, who by then were seen by government as the direct victims of Kukura Wundi were in government. So the major or the senior ZAPU leaders are still in government. Joshua Ngomo is alive. And uh, ZANU is very comfortable because they know that anyone who raises the issue and they, they are not happy with it, uh, Joshua Ngomo is going to call the person to order in, in courts. So the, the, the issue of Kukura Wundi in the 90s is just a, you know, a whisper. But a lot is done in the, the, the rise of civil society organizations like uh, Imbovanema Shabezulu. Uh, you have the, the, the coming in of uh, breaking the silence. Everything, people start talking about it. So what happened is that in, uh, what happens is that in 99, uh, Nkomo dies. So the death of Joshua Nkomo really shocks uh, ZANU PF to the core. They are worried about whether ZAN, uh, ZAPU remain in government. They're worried about uh, now there's the talk of the, the, the ZCTU forming a political party. So the, 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 there's more like the, the, the death of Nkomo also leads to, to the death of the, the de facto one party state. So there's the rise of uh, the, the, the call for a new constitution, there's NCA, there's the opposition, there's everyone is, is, is like, you know, it's like the, the, the death of Nkomo opened up to everyone and everyone is saying, okay, the person that we respected is no longer there. So we are going to call for the things that we've always wanted to. And so the, there is fear within ZANU-PF. They are worried. And for this first time, the president of Zimbabwe within a period of about two months or so, or even a month, he talked about Gukura Wundi more than three times. So he, he starts to, uh, to, 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 to address the issue. You know, he starts to say, but he, you know, if you look at, I think it was November, November 20, uh, 99, uh, there, there, there is a chronically article which was written where the president um, Gabi says, uh, we, we are going to set up a committee that has, is going to look at the issue of Kukura And by then he was talking to the chiefs. He, he told the 45 chiefs uh, in Tabazinduna in a meeting that these are 45 chiefs from Matibele. And he says, we are going to address the issue of Kukura Wundi. And we want our people to feel to be part of this country. And he goes on to say, you know, we are going to look at their issues area by area. We're going to deal with this issue. And it reminds me of the new mantra we are going to look into the issue of Kukura Wundi on a case-to-case -case basis. So the current arrangement to have the chiefs trying to address the issue of Kukura Wundi is not new. If you look again at the Chronicle of uh, uh, 18, November, 18 October 99, Mugabe was uh, attending a memorial service. I think it was for the late Squilly Moyo at the Brother in uh, Church uh, in Christ in Bulawayo. And Mugabe said he was going to compensate okay. the victims of Gukura Wundi. He says the victims of Gukura Wundi are going to be compensated. And we, 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 are, we are going to do everything that we, we have in our power to make sure that this issue is solved. So 99 is full of uh, quite a lot of uh, promises. And actually what I found interesting is that even in 2000, uh, the same discussions continue. And in Bindura, there was a time when Mugabe was attending a function in Bindura. And he, he says, you know, he regrets, uh, it was, I think it was uh, 8 August 2000. Mugabe says, you know, Bukuraund was a mistake. It should not have happened. We are one people. But this is where the MDC is, is building. The MDC is coming in and uh, they, there's a lot of, they, they fear, they can tell that there's a lot of anger. And if they don't resolve the issue of Kukura Wundi, then something will happen. And what happens around that time again, after the death of Nkomo, uh, Zipra is promised that they are going to get their properties. There's a committee that is set to deal with the issue of properties. Uh, Joseph Msiga actually hands over the properties. There is a function uh, where uh, Robert um, Joseph Msiga attends and uh, he hands over uh, properties, the farms.
to, Zan, to, 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 to Zebra guys. But once he has done that, it doesn't take a week to, to, to come back and say, oh, sorry guys, the, the properties that we, we handed you over actually now don't belong to Zebra anymore. Because some of the farms had been sold, some of them were now, uh, the, the owners had been given 20 year leases, uh, or some 99 year leases. So what used to be Zipra properties were no longer Zipra properties. They were now in private hands. And after the promises and the grandstanding and the news headlines that they are going to give Zipra properties back, it turns out that it's not true because Zipra does not own the properties. So the back, you know, behind the scenes, there is an argument of how are we going to then compensate uh, Google our own the victims? Who is going to lead the process? A group of civil society organizations and activists go out to meet Mugabe, come up with the formula to say, you know, we are going to go to the chiefs. The chiefs know who was affected. And the chiefs are going to write, write the names and, uh, uh, and then we give you the names. And the process, the, 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 the process is in, in, in the whole this thing, the process is hijacked by ZANU PF. Remember back then, uh, Sika is in ZANU, Kabengwa is in ZANU, and many other senior guys. And they say, no, you cannot deal with uh, Kukura uh, without us being involved because we were the guys uh, who were uh, 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 affected. And rightfully so. They were the leaders at that particular time that addressed Matebeleland, or that, that, that represented Matebeleland. And it would have been something else in their eyes if Gugraund was going to be solved without them involved. So before the 2002 uh, parliamentary elections, a committee is set in ZANU-PF to actually deal with the issue of Gugraund, to come up with the modalities, to deal with the chiefs, to make sure that the list is written and those people are compensated. But there's no formula on how they are going to be compensated or something like that, but there the, the is talk. Come the, the, the 2000 parliamentary elections, uh, ZANU-PF is seriously defeated in Matebele. They lose all the parliamentary seats uh, in Bulawayo. Uh, I think they just win one in, in, in Bay Bridge, and this is Matebele and South, and they win about one or zero in Matebele and North. And the last that I heard of that committee uh, in 2001, journalist, I think it was from the Chronicle, who asked them, so how far have you gone with the, uh, the, 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 the committee to compensate uh, victims of Kukura Wood? Zanpia for Bulawa, I said, you know, currently we are looking at the results of, uh, you know, still taking a post-mortem after our heavy loss in the, the parliamentary elections. And after that, we are going to move on. Obviously, the people of Matebele land had voted in protest. They had voted for the opposition because of Gukuraund. They were angry. And it is the only area, or these are the only provinces, uh, Mat North, Mat South, Bulawayo, where the MDC in 2000 got, especially the rural areas, let me be specific, because in Harare they also got uh, more than 50%. It was only in Matebele North and Matebele South where the opposition got more than 50% in rural areas. And it was clear that it was a protest vote. And I'm sure when ZANPF met and they discussed this issue, they said to themselves, but why are we compensating these people if they have not voted for us? What is in it? They've already abandoned us, abandoned us. So the MDC takes advantage of the protest vote in Matebele land. They establish themselves as the, 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 the main opposition party in Matebele land. Unfortunately, the opposition does not take the issue of Gugura Wundi any further. They don't also say to government, put pressure, because at that time they had the leverage. They had the votes. They had the people, and they could have said, yeah, the people of are very angry with you because of Google Rawind. what are you doing? So maybe politically they knew that as well, if the issue of Google Rawind is solved, then they don't have the, 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 the cloud. People will not keep on protesting. So if this issue of Google Rawind keeps hanging, then these people will keep voting. Remember at the beginning, we talked about the, the, the political and ideological manipulation how Gugura Wundi has been used as a political tool to get votes and to, 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 to say, so we are, we are here now. Zambia has lost 
And they are saying, ah, okay, we've lost, we don't care. Why should we worry? And I keep on asking myself that from 2000 up to now, what has the opposition done when it comes to the issue of Kukra Wundi? They are not in power, someone will argue. So they, 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 they are not in power, so what can they do? But why can't we see more action in parliament? Why can't we see every time there is a, 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 a question and answer, people asking uh, the, 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 the ministers what they're doing in terms of Kukra Wundi? So from 2000, when ZANU PF has abandoned uh, the issue of compensating and they are angry that they've lost, nothing happens. So Kukura Wundi becomes an issue that we talk about and people in civil society start lobbying seriously, activists start lobbying. People start talking about the international world. Say, but we need to highlight this issue at an international uh, level to say, you know, there was a genocide. So the lobbying continues for many years. People, different people play different roles. In 2013, when there's a government of national unity, there is an organ of national healing and reconciliation uh, that is uh, set up. So Sekai, Holland, uh, and uh, uh, Moses Mzila, uh, John Gomo are seconded to that, to, to that organ. I think it was one of the useless organs in the history of Zimbabwe because it achieved nothing. The only thing that I remember about that organ was uh, uh, the, the, the arrest of uh, uh, Moses Mzila. Moses Mzila, who was a minister, was actually arrested going to, 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 to Lupane to address victims of Kukura Wundi. And I remember visiting him at the Lupane police station. And his crime was going to attend the Kukura Wundi meeting that had been called by, by villagers. And these villagers were saying, now that we have the ministry, we have the ministry of uh, or an organ of healing, we, you guys, we want you to come and talk about Gukura Wundi. So the minister is arrested. The other two ministers keep quiet. I'm certain that they'd been invited for that meeting and they decided not to attend because they knew what was happening. So if a minister in charge of healing is arrested, then what do you expect will happen? So the, the GNU largely is, is just talk, 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 and no action. So nothing happens when it comes to the issues of Kukura uh, uh, Wundi. We have a new constitution. The new constitution brings in uh, the, 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 the ministry or, or the, 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 the NPRC, National Peace and Reconciliation Commission. Again, we are so optimistic that something uh, is going to happen. You know, we are told that uh, there, there will be uh, meetings, uh, truth-telling communities will take time. Remember when the, 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 the Truth Commission was uh, set up, or the NPRC was set up, by the, or it was brought into being by the 2013 Constitution. But between 2013 and 2017, Mugabe has not signed the law that brings into effect the NPRC. So NPRC exists outside the legal framework. They're just there, but they're not legally uh, you know, uh, mandated to do their work. Eventually after the coup, Nangagwa still has the energy and the, the, the voice of the people is the voice of God. He, he goes to Davos, he says, no, I have just signed uh, the NPRC into law. So these guys are going to the ground and they are going to, uh, you know, give you uh, what you are talking about. We we are we, we are taking this thing seriously. But this was despite the fact that the, or just a day, I think, or, or, or on his inauguration, I think it was around 24 November 19, 19, 20, 2017, he had said, let bargains be bargains. And people were saying, what are you saying when you're saying let bargains be bargains? So it could have been meant anything, but a lot of people said, so are you saying Bukura Wundi should be bargains? But the NPRC is signed into law. And we expect the NPRC to start working. Nothing happens. There are a few meetings that happen here and there, but largely the NPRC does not achieve, does not you know, do what it's supposed to do. A year or two later, most of the commissioners that are in the NPRC, uh, you know, uh, their, their contracts are not renewed. Enter uh, Obet Kutu, who then says, you know what? Uh, this Kukura Wundi thing is a tiny bit of the work that we are doing. 
It's not actually part of our, you know, it's not the major work that we're doing. We are looking at many other things. It's not just kukura wood. So we, we are stuck. Nothing happens. And the question is, what should be done to make sure that the issue of Bukura Wundi uh, is solved? And I'm trying to give you a historical background of how much unwilling the government of Zimbabwe has been in dealing with the issue of Bukura Wundi. So the NPRC is, becomes a non-starter. In 2017, there's the idea that you know, the president is willing to engage and uh, the civil society organizations in Bulawayo, uh, they actually go to meet the, the, the president uh, in March uh, 20, should have been 2019, uh, where I'm arrested at the state house. But some people go there and civil society meets the president. And the 10 point plan comes up. So the, the material and collective comes up with a, a 10 point plan. And the 10 point plan talks about, uh, you know, exhumations, it talks about giving birth certificates to the, those kids who don't have uh, birth certificates. It talks about many other issues it come, when it comes to the issue of Kukraun. A lot of other guys in the, the, the Matabellian Collective then don't agree with the methodology that is being used. And they think, no, 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 here, we are moving too fast. Probably we are not being used by the state in this. So they pull out. Matabellian Forum is formed. Matabellian Collective have two or three other engagements with the president, still nothing comes, nothing comes out. But then in the process then, we pick again the process of the chiefs. So somehow in the, in the process then it says, no, the chiefs are the ones who are going to deal with the issue of Kukura Wundi. So they know the people who are affected, they live in these areas so the chiefs can deal. Enter Fortune Charumbira of the chiefs council saga. And he's the one now who's spearheading the, the process of uh, uh, Gukura Wundi. He's the one now who is uh, talking about how Gukura Wundi is going to be solved. But the issue of chiefs is not new. In 2000, 45 chiefs were told by the then president Robert Mugabe that the issue of Gukura Wundi is going to be solved, they're going to be compensation, the issues are going to be looked at a case to case basis. I'm certain that some chiefs had already compiled names and forwarded them somewhere. Anyway, they are our chiefs, we love them, we think they are genuine, we think they, are, they really mean business, they were affected, they're the ones who know the process. So it's good, the chiefs can do this. But are the chiefs capacitated to do it? So we start getting, getting headlines without action. No, the chiefs are going to be capacitated to do the, chief, the, the meeting. So we are going to have a capacity building meeting and the chiefs are going to be told what to do. You follow up on the stories about the capacitation of the chiefs. The chiefs tell you, and we only read about this in the newspaper. We've not done anything. And a week ago, we see a headline that, you know, government has set aside money for the Google own the work so that the chiefs can go into the communities and talk about the issue of Gukura Wundi. You see another headline saying, the chiefs have already started compiling the names of those people who don't have birth certificates. And they're going, they're doing that in this moving fast. You ask chiefs, so who's has compiled what name? Where do people go when they want to put down their names? And people are starting to call you, Where, which chief do I go to if I have a relative who don't have a birth certificate? The chiefs say, no, we just read these things in the newspaper. The last interview that I did, I, was, uh, I did that interview with Ken Matema, who says, please, please, can there be transparency? We can't be reading in the newspapers that there's been money set aside for the chiefs when we don't know it. Because our communities, they go around saying, I'm a chief sister, Jimali. You know, so in summary, a lot has been said about Gukura Wundi. Government has promised a lot but nothing has been delivered. And this is where we talk about the political manipulation. When they think that they are losing power, when they think that there's an election that is coming, they talk to ground and say, no, we're going to solve this issue and it's going to be fine. The question is, are they sincere? And the other question, is it, one, is it realistic that the perpetrator can lead the process? What I know is that people need healing. What I know is that people want to talk about what happened to them. 
What I know is that there is no one that I've talked to. I mean, the past 15 years I've been re researching on Google. Around, I've never talked to any one of the people that I've interviewed who said to me, we want to revenge. None of them ever talked about revenge. People talk about saying, we want to bury our relatives. You know, there is a woman that uh, comes to mind, Una Welcome. Una Welcome was a, a lady. Her son was uh, uh, from when he was from the war. Uh, he, he was teaching in Lupani. He was a war vet. He was killed in Lupani. was buried in a shallow grave. Uh, her and Losa Welcome, they tried to bury, give their son a decent burial. And they couldn't. And when I interviewed her, sometimes she said, I think it was around 20. 18, just after the, uh, the, the elections, uh, just, be during, be, just a few days before the Mosante Commission uh, uh, public hearings. She said, when my husband died, he said, I should make sure that our son gets proper burial. Because that was the only son that we had. And my husband said, we should give him proper burial. And I promised him that we're going to give my son a proper burial. So this woman wants her son to be buried. She even goes to the Mosante Commission and talk about the issue that she wants welcome to be buried, to be given a proper burial because she didn't get a chance to mourn her son. She never even visited the place. She just knows where it is, but she just needs him to remove him from a shallow grave that is on her way to the nearest school and she wants to give him a proper burial. By then she was now, uh, you know, she, she couldn't see properly. So Una Welcome died in 2019 before she could give her son a proper burial. The issue of reburials still continues. And what the people want, what the people of Matevelen want is a proper burial. They want their husbands, their sons, their daughters, to get proper burial. The people of Matevelen want to remember their relatives by erecting memorial uh, shrines, memorial plaques, where they can write the history of what happened. And Ibe Chilikazul has been in the forefront of erecting these memorial plaques. A Slovela, a Cholocho, a Keze, Palakwe. But what happens? Each time a memorial plaque is erected, is destroyed. The longest time a memorial plaque stayed or was up was about uh, maybe three months. The last one, a Palagwe, was erected on the 31st of, uh, on the 30th of, I think it was the 30th of, uh, uh, the 30th of, 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 of October. So it was October and, and uh, November, December, two months. In January, it was bombed and destroyed. So the question is, people who are going to destroy memorial plaques, are they willing to sit down with the people of Matebele and, and talk reconciliation? Are they willing to talk forgiveness? Are they prepared to acknowledge what happened if they don't want to acknowledge the graves where the people of Matebele and are? What's so wrong by building a tombstone? We have the heroes here, where we remember our fallen heroes and we can go there and read about their hero. I mean, so-and-so died, he did this. There's nothing wrong with that. But why can't the people of Matebelele remember their own people? Why can they remember their sons and daughters? Why? Can the people of Matevele do proper burials? Tata Matambo, give it a decent burial, call the spirit, live happily ever after. So we're even prevented from you know, doing our own traditional rituals when it comes to the people who died. So those people who were killed are still in captive today. They're still in the state's jurisdiction because you can't do anything. According to the state, you're not supposed to go there. You're not supposed to remember them. So it's not a lot that the people of Matebelen are asking for. I don't think the people of Matebelen want money. They're not for sale. 
So let's not believe that if we talk about compensation, we'll go around, distribute money, give them hafers because they are poor, then they're not going to talk about rebellions. This issue of solving Kukura Wundi and making sure that people are compensated should not be a bribery scheme. It should not be a condition that we give you this, then you shut up. Don't talk about it again. The only time we will be at peace is when we honestly, openly talk about Gukura only, without fearing for any consequences. So right now, if I have a, a Twitter space or a, a Zoom meeting about Gukura only and the internet collapses, I then say to myself, so was it the government? Did they switch off the internet because they don't want me to talk about Gukura only? So if this is why we say, where there is lies and falsehoods, there's suspicion, there's division. So we're always suspicious. So if I leave this meeting, then I, I, I just fall. I'll blame it on the government. If I leave this meeting and I lose my phone, I'll blame it on government. Because we are suspicious of it. They don't want to address the issues that affect us. So unless we have truth telling, the issue of Gugra Undu will always be an issue. And we, we should not, you know, so the, the MDC benefited from the, 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 the protest vote of 2000. And then, then, then they thought, uh, okay, Matevelen is ours, this is our strong vote. And they forgot to address the issue. And honestly, the opposition now takes advantage of the people of Matemele. This is why they will tell in the corridors, ah, Welshmen, where we are, Anavan. You know, Welshmen has no people. So he cannot tell us who to put in Matemele land. We are the ones with the people. Even if we remove him, nothing will happen. They forget that they came in because of the protest vote of Kukura. I guess we need to be organized. I guess it's time the people of Matemele land ask themselves, who are we sending to council? Who are we sending to parliament? What are they saying? Are they going to go to parliament and talk about Gukura Wundi? If the politician has no Gukura Wundi in their manifesto, don't even talk to him. What are they promising him? Our long standing problem in Matebele Land is Gukura Wundi. As long as the Gukura Wundi issue is not solved, marginalization will not stop. We will still go to Harare to get liquor licenses. We will still go to Harare to get birth certificates and passports. We will be the last to get anything because we don't matter. Unless and until we start looking inward and say, we are going to raise our own Joshua's and our own Moses to deliver us from Egypt, we will never go anywhere. We cannot afford to privatize the struggle. And we cannot afford to even listen to other people. The person who knows the pain of Gukura Wundi is the one who went through it. So there is no way we can then list our struggle to other people and think that we are going to deliver the change that we want. And I think it's time the opposition respected the people of Matebele for the history that they went through. Right now, anyone can come here and represent Matebele and any political party can come and impose a, 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 a candidates. And when we talk, they'll tell you that we are a minority. So the minority has no voice. The minority has no representation. The same minority that was killed is now killed by making sure that they have no representation. So we want to fill council with people who have no history of Gukura Wundi. And we expect that they're going to talk about Gukura Wundi. We expect that we're going to go to council and say, comrades, may we have a place to do a monument for Gukura Wundi? They say, yes. We need to realize that when to solve this issue on our own, let's work together with the chiefs. Let's help them where they need help. Let's see where the process starts and ends. But if you dine with the devil, use a very long spoon. Because we know 
that for a long time, it has always been the issue of political manipulation. It's not about solving the people. So in summary, for us to attain peace, coexistence, respect, for us not to be called minority, that doesn't matter when it comes to decision making. We need to stand by our own first, store strength in numbers, support our own, have a clear agenda. And the agenda is making sure that Matebele land and Miglands solve the issue of Kukurawood. And to do that, we need truth telling. We need a clear process that is not led by the perpetrator. I can talk the whole day. But lastly, I want to say the people of Matebeleland are very clear what they want. The people of Matebeleland want a platform where they can say what happened. They want to reconcile with the rest of the country. They want to be part of Zimbabwe in every aspect, be it governance, be it decision making, be it resource allocation. They want to bury their loved ones in a decent way. Even your dog, when you love it, when it dies, you give it a decent send off. You bury it properly. Those with dogs know that they bury their dogs or even a cat. They mourn their animals, they mourn their cats, they mourn their dogs. So are we not human enough to be given a chance to mourn our relatives, to give them a proper burial, to write a memorial plaque? Here lies a great man, Mr. Njov who was shot by the 5th Brigade on the 16th of November, 1983, May your soul rest in peace. Do our kids not deserve to know the history? Don't they deserve to know what happened? If we don't erect these memorial plaques, are we not destroying the history? 50 years from now, who narrate who died where? So the agenda is clear. Don't erect memorial plaques. You're going to die, and the history is going to die with you. And we are simply saying, no, that will not happen. Until the last breath of anyone in Matebele land, we are going to talk about Kukurawad. So it's not about Zenzele. It's not about the Imbovane. It's not about Ugutula trust or Habakkuk trust or anyone. It's about the people of Matibele. So you can target one, but we are not one. We are many. We are like legions. And for sure, when it comes to the issue of Kukurawundi, we shall be demons. And we will pop wherever where we need to pop until the issue is solved. I'll stop here for now. type them, then I'll be able to see them. So I'm not sure whether Brighton is on because uh, uh, there were network challenges at the beginning. So some people were uh, exiting. So I'm, uh, the site team, if there are any questions on, on Facebook, uh, please let me know. Brighton, you can come so in. Much, thanks so much, Tanzele, for that presentation. Right, maybe one or two questions that I will ask you, maybe is the issue of, um, now, the chiefs are taking over the issue of the ground now. What For some it? reason, I can't hear Brighton. Can't hear me? Okay, I can, uh, someone send me a message on, on WhatsApp and uh, it's, it's Brighton, I'm uh, not Brighton, <laughs> Maguanya was saying the, the 2002 the presidential elections, yes, the, the parliamentary elections were in 2000 and in 2002 were the, the, the presidential elections. 
Um, I think there's someone who, I don't know whether someone has raised their hand. Okay, there's a, a question. Is it a question? Right on, I saw that you sent the question, but I can't remember where you sent it. The involvement of chiefs and the government in solving uh, Kukura Wundi. I'm not sure whether it's, it's a question. For me, uh, how effective has been uh, NPRC? Right, let me do this. How effective has been R N N NPRC in solving uh, Kukura Wundi? Uh, I, I don't think they solved it. So the issue of Kukura Wundi, we are talking about it now. And they, they, so that means they were not effective. But I think that, that they, we had a lot of good guys there, the first uh, uh, commissioners, who were really willing to, to tackle the issue of ground. They had a number of meetings, they set up uh, a lot of uh, uh, committees and they, they, they had their strategic documents and they actually, and I attended the launch of the strategic document in Arare, which was, uh, uh, I think the, the guest of honor was uh, Kembo Mohad, who was also the patron for the NPRC. And, they, they, they even said Google Hound was their number one priority. Unfortunately, I think they, they received a lot of resistance from central government. They did not see uh, their plan throughout. They were replaced, most of them, and uh, replaced by people like Gotu. And the new NPRC that is there now, uh, I'm not sure whether they've really done anything. So they, they, they've really, um, it's a long time since I heard about the meeting organized by NPRC. Then someone says, what can you say about political parties who use Kukura Wundi as a campaign strategy and never say anything after the elections? Yeah, I think we, we, we need to be, Aman Bagiti, I think we need to be careful. Uh, it's okay for people to raise these issues when there are elections, but we need to go them, to back to them and ask them, what have you done? Honestly, Personally, I'm disappointed uh, with the opposition because I think they would, I mean, look, Jonathan, even though he was in ZANU, uh, when he then was at the point when he was a, 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 an independent member of parliament, came up with the, the, the NGO, uh, the, the Google Round Bill, which was to try and criminalize anyone who denies that Google Round happened. And my question still remains, what has the opposition done have they actually gone to parliament and asked questions? Why are we not seeing these questions? Can they lobby government in parliament? They sit in committees. I've never heard of a, a committee, uh, uh, you know, there, there are all sorts of uh, committees that go around and look for views, but I've never heard of a parliamentary committee that is coming to Matabele and to hear what they want to go around the issue solved. I've not heard of that committee. So why are we not having our own MPs from our own region taking this issue? My question is simply, simple because maybe probably Gukura Wundi is not an agenda in the MDC. It it's really doesn't matter who you are. If you come from Matebele and you become a minority, like they call us the minority. So you, 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 the agenda is less removed than PF. So when we remove than PF, then do what? Because we removed the Mugabe. But if we don't have a plan, we we'll still have the same issue. Mugabe is gone, the issue of Google Round is still here. So I think we, 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 we need to, this is why for me, I'm advocating that let's have our representatives from our villages so that we can then go and remind them. Someone says the destruction of memorial plaques erected by Bechilis Gazulu, what can be done to secure this? The last one was secured. They had been plastered, concrete. There were security guards for a week. But in fact, there were security guards for two weeks. And for the two weeks when there were security guards, they, it was not destroyed. The moment the security guards were, 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 were removed, it was uh, destroyed. So there, there are a lot of things that happen that sometimes it paid to site and other people cannot share publicly on the efforts that are being done to actually secure these blocks. But a lot is done. But you can never match state power or state resources. So for me, 
I don't think there will be anyone who can remove or destroy the plaques except the people who are linked to the state. And we have state protection. So this is the question is, why are they not arrested? Why have these senses seen someone being arrested? You, the last time Jaramba said, you know, they, they are not worried about the, the blacks because they were not involved, or they were not told. So a crime can happen because the government has not been told. What happened on public hearings on Gukura Wundi? Well, the NPRC uh, started afresh. They employed, they took new uh, commissioners and new commissioners have not said anything about the public hearings. So nothing has happened. And like I said at the beginning, you know, we can have this public hearing as many times as we want. The government knows what happened. They had the Jambagwe Commission, they had the intelligence reports, they had the international community, and all these things. So they know what happened. So someone says, is memorialization and proper burials enough to achieve justice for Kukura Undi? What would justice look like in your view? So for me, as Zen said, justice for Gukura Wundi will mean perpetrators being brought to book, tried, and sent to jail because Gukura Wundi was a child crime against humanity. My own evidence, I'll say Gukura Wundi had all the hallmarks of a genocide. It was there to eliminate a particular ethnic group, and it was a genocide. But this is me. But also the reality then says, it is not possible currently to have the, the, the perpetrators of Gukura only being sent to jail because they are the ones who are in power. So they won't send themselves to jail. So for now, for me, justice, or the journey towards justice should be broken into stages. What is clear is the people of Matebele need to talk about what happened. They need truth telling. That should be done. The people of Matebele need birth certificates. Currently, we are talking about the, you know, the issue of voter registration. Uh, the, the constituencies in Matebele land, Bulawayo, Mat North, and Mat South, are the lowest when it comes to voter registration. And these are the three provinces who are going to lose the most seats in the next delimitation. Because people are fed up, they are angry, they are Debele Akalala too much. We've given up. And if young people don't have birth certificates, so if at the moment people can get birth certificates, people can, those who need, uh, who need uh, to bury their relatives, they need to be given a chance to bury their relatives. So those are the things that I'm looking at. Uh, the other question is uh, uh, what, uh, with the effort done by government, do you think they can be healing without justice and reconciliation and truth telling? This is what I was saying that, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, when you talk about atrocities, disturbances, genocide, healing comes with justice and truth telling. And currently, I don't see that happening. Uh, what mandate of peace and reconciliation is it only to focus uh, on the Google around the genocide or? any problems in Zimbabwe. Uh, but the NPRC is uh, looking at uh, the conflicts, any form of conflict in Zimbabwe, not only Kukurawundi, but Murambatsuina and any other. They had a, a roadmap where they said, this is where we're starting and this is where we're ending. And they have not done anything. It's not about Kukurawundi only, but they, they, they have not done anything. I think those are the, the questions that we had, uh, Brighton, unless we have something, maybe I can give it to you so that you uh, you, you conclude. I hope you can hear me now, Zanzeli. Thanks so much for the presentation. Uh, it was insightful. Uh, we're raising a very clear issue that people from Matilda just want rape areas of their relatives. They want their relatives to get their national IDs. When it comes to concept conversation, it doesn't talk about issue of rival. Thanks so much for the presentation. It was very insightful. Uh, to follow more about this uh, webinar series, you can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Center for Innovation Technology on YouTube, as well as the Facebook page, as well as on our Facebook page. Till then, thank you so much, Zenzel, for your time.